welcome to Photo Dodo, where you can explore making comics, cartoons, characters, stories, and imaginary worlds. With me, Adam Fotis, creator of Dragon and Goat, a comic about a dragon and a goat. Plus, he's a professor of humanities and friend of huge manatees. So, after you've practiced drawing in the last video the 3D shapes, uh, what we want to do is think about how we can use those to create some stacks of, of shapes to build some characters on. Now, this is going to help us um, find inspiration, get creative, and use our imagination because I don't want you to worry with this exercise about creating any characters that you've made before. What I want you to do is just draw the 3D shapes and stacks that you can and think about how you can use your imagination to create characters from what you see in those shapes. So, all the shapes and stacks that I'm going to be making t uh, for this video, I'm not going to be sort of predetermining what the character is going to be. I'm just going to look and then draw uh, based on like what I see in, in the shapes. So we'll sort of fast forward through some of these as I'm drawing, but I want to show you uh, what we mean. So with the very first one, we're going to uh, take a look here. I'm going to create a cube. And then I'm going to draw a, uh, let's draw maybe a rectangle underneath the cube. Okay, so that's going to be my first, first stack. I'll do another one. Let's do a cylinder. Then I'll do a little uh, sort of cube here. Off to the side. Uh, now, I like this one because it's a little bit off balance. This one, like right away, I can tell this one's gonna be maybe a bit too static. So I'm gonna go back. And let's trim it down. Maybe here I'll do a sideways cylinder. Sort of going back in space like this and this. I like that a lot more. All right, so then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna fill in the rest of these with stacks of shapes. And so you can take a look at what I'm doing, um, you know, if you wanna borrow some of the ideas in terms of stacks, but I want you for the most part to like come up with your own ideas. Don't think too much of it, maybe just randomly uh, point to uh, whichever of these you wanna combine and try to use one uh, from each at least uh, in one of the sort of stacks that you've got. Now I've got eight stacks of shapes and I'm ready to start drawing onto them some characters. Just some things to point out as I was making some of my decisions, maybe you saw me making some erasings, uh, redrawing, drawing. Uh, most of them are all stacks of uh, just two shapes. Uh, this one is actually more like 
three shapes. We've got a little sort of dome or a sphere on top of the cone, uh, so that can actually be good to, to build a sort of shape there. Uh, we've got our irregular shape that I wanted to get in, and then a, a cylinder and a bunch of cubes. Now you notice on the cubes too, I'm changing the angles, like how uh, it sort of bends and moves around. So not all the shapes, like when you're drawing a cube, doesn't always have to be straight with the edge of the paper, but you can actually sort of turn it. Some of these decisions will make your characters more dynamic, but if you're having a hard time drawing the 3D shapes, don't sweat it too much. Just draw the basic ones that you can, or even use flat shapes to make your stacks, and then you can draw characters inside. The important thing is that you practice. Keep trying over and over again, and pretty soon you'll be able to master these, but it may take a bit, so just give yourself a chance. So let's go ahead and turn a few of these uh, stack shapes into some characters. So the first thing I do is I like to find like where I'd like to have uh, the face of the character here. Uh, for this one, if we start here, we could do a face on this side or we could do a face on this side. I think with just the way that it's turned on the paper, I'm gonna have the character sort of facing this side. And so what I do is I usually split <coughs> the uh, face in half and then uh, do another line here and this will tell me halfway down the face where the eyes should be and with a uh, sort of the angles going back I could do some eyes going back like this and then I can think about where I'm gonna have the nose or what kind of nose I'm gonna do uh, for this one and for uh, your drawings what I really suggest you do is just be really random try to come up with the most silly faces you can for your characters uh, you can look at lots of different characters for inspiration so you can just pull out a comic book um, so here I've got Shigeru Mizuki's uh, Katado the uh, Great Tanuki Wars and so I could take and maybe look Look at the ears of uh, the tanuki here on the front uh, or the nose maybe I kind of borrow that nose because I kind of like that uh, on the front and then I can make that mouth uh, or maybe like a slightly different mouth I can make it kind of like wrap around the face like this so kind of like that and since his eyes aren't uh, sort of lowered like that. He doesn't look quite as angry. Uh, so my little box tanuki is a little bit happier uh, than the one that we've got here, right? Okay, so then uh, I gotta think about the body. And for this this body, it's a sort of sideways cylinder. You know, I don't have to leave this as a, just a sort of flat shape. I can add some more things on that side. And for sure, I'm gonna do some arms. So uh, here, Let's see, I'm gonna draw like a, uh, where I wanna see the shoulder, little ball joint there, extend out where the arm is gonna go, and then another joint for the elbow. So this is sort of going back to our original stick figure characters that we were making uh, at the very beginning. And then let's have this hand uh, sort of, or this arm sort of bend it this way, and then we'll do another sort of like circle for uh, this hand. Uh, so then this one, I'm gonna have this come out here, uh, or maybe maybe more at an angle up. So like this, another little joint on that side, and then this can be like that. Uh, and so then I can do my legs. Uh, and for this one, let's do maybe legs sort of pointing down this way. And since uh, this is going back at this angle, I know that this leg and the feet have to go back at that angle too. So this tells me, uh, this line sort of tells me where this leg should go. And I can add a little line there for that. So you can see this is already like shaping up to be a really uh, pretty three dimensional character that I'm starting with. Um, and now, uh, from this point, what I would wanna do is start carving out the details. And that might mean uh, making this, this head, and probably will mean making this head much less uh, square to start with. So let's, let's start with rounding off some of the angles of this uh, cube head. And I'm gonna back off on some of the, uh, the distance that we have here. So I'm gonna do that. These lines will be kind of like 
make them a little bit more furry. We can let go of this line. The edge doesn't need to be there. And then you can sort of take this line here. I don't like, don't like that so much. So let's make this curve this down and then kind of pull that back up. And then that means I can kind of let go of a lot of these exterior lines. And then for the body, you know, the body's looking still pretty, uh, like pretty much like a drum. So I'm gonna wrap it around. I do like some of that. So let's maybe keep that curve, um, turn this into more of like overalls, it's starting to look like some overalls we got here. And then before I go too much further, I'm gonna go ahead and give more substantial arms. So I'm gonna use this curve to come down here and create a little cylinder. So again, still using those basic shapes. So adding a cylinder for the arm on this side and then connecting where the thickness of the wrist, going back here and back here like this. So that gives me an arm. And then for uh, the hands, I'm just gonna add, you know, fingers are really just tubes and I'd say, don't worry about making them too detailed here. They give me some little claws on that side. And then I'm gonna round up the bottom here. So we've got that arm and then do some legs. So keep it simple here, just gonna draw two lines. So just like we did with the stick figure, you know, adding shapes on the exterior like that. And then these will be the feet. Got that there. And then let's do uh, some sort of ear on this side. So he's not really a tanuki for my guy. So I'm just gonna give him kind of like a, a little bit of a different ear. And then maybe, uh, let's see, maybe some like hair on the top. So something like that. And then I need to get this arm figured out. And then, you know, if I want to do an undershirt for like the overalls here, and then maybe even adding uh, a tail. Do like that. Oh, I can make it more of like a possum. Like that would be, that'd be cool. More, a little more possum-y. Maybe sh stretch out this snout a little bit more. those like bean teeth that nasty bean teeth that possums have I mean they're cool they're marsupials so they have like a little pouch so maybe I give, give a, little, a little pouch here we go she's got a little pouch there maybe she's got I don't know what she's got in there maybe she's got a pencil she's got like a little pencil maybe she's got a sketchbook I don't think that possums can really keep sketchbooks in their actual pouch, but you know, if you're wearing overalls, it's a great place to keep a little sketchbook. Draw anything that you see. So then we've got 
uh, our first character built off his shapes here. What I like about this one is how it's not so static. Like some of the other ones are a little bit uh, static, but this is actually a really good way to start up if you, you know you're just getting started. Just plop the shapes on, um, you know, pretty quickly. Don't worry about making them as um, sort of irregular as this one. But what I like about this one is it's going to give us a really sort of dynamic pose. So the the lines sort of moving through this are curved. Uh, and so that kind of asymmetry, so things not being perfectly balanced on the left and the right hand side, uh, that's going to give us some, you know, some more dynamic characters. Uh, so the sort of face, we're going to do the face sort of looking uh, maybe this way. Um, we're looking at the top, the top of the head down like this. So then I, the, the eye lines should curve down in that same way. So I can't really have this character looking up unless I actually take off this tube top. So we'd be looking at the top here. But with the eyes here, and this way, and then just with a head like that. And then kind of want to right away go ahead and get into some characterization with some maybe grumpy uh, eyebrows here. And then maybe like a, a nose. I might change that in a second. Uh, but this is a good starting place. And then I can kind of get a feel for what I want to do with the, the arms. Let me go this way. Maybe I'll do this. And this. Something like that. Actually, let's change that. So at, in this pose, I was having the arms kind of like coming up to where the head is, but a lot of times it's good to make sure that your limbs don't fold back in too much on the body. Uh, this helps on the silhouette of the character, which was one of the principles that I think um, Disney uh, put on his his animators and uh, cartoonists was that you don't you don't have the same uh, you, you want to really look at this sort of outline silhouette of the character to make sure it's more dynamic. Okay, so we'll do something like that for the arms, and then maybe do some legs like this. So we've got the character kind of looking out this way. Maybe it looks like he's, uh, you know, with a, a ba doing a baseball pose or something like that, like with a baseball bat. Uh, I don't know. I'm just kind of thinking. Actually, kind of looks more like a uh, maybe a scientist or something. So we've got him with a large, large flask, maybe. And do that. Uh, so we've got these long gangly arms and then the head. So although we might not see the sort of like top of the head like this flattened, sort of see maybe how some hair might uh, sort of fold down. Maybe do a bowl cut, right? Like do something like this. edge and then the arms here maybe this is looking a little long so I'm just going to change the proportions there make this arm end here and then come up here and then I'm going to do these as you know fairly like skinny arms we'll do like really skinny arms uh, like this so maybe he's a, a lab tech maybe he's just kind of grumpy maybe he's an intern uh, not getting adequate pay for the work that he's putting in on the, this sort of uh, company. 
so as I'm drawing these, I start to think about stories and um, you know where these characters might be situated, and it helps me kind of think about what what to sort of draw them into in terms of clothing and other other things. I guess you wear shorts when you're in a lab, but maybe you could wear like shorts. His like shoes sort of kick up just a little bit, so it seems as though it's kind of like bending his leg. Maybe makes him look a bit more maybe sneaky in that respect. And then let's move this hand. Taking it and then skulking away. Uh, maybe we do like a long shadow, sort of indicate that he's not doing uh, the wrong thing or not doing the right thing. I guess. There we go. All right. So there's another character. Let's see. Uh, for this one. We'll go maybe like looking up uh, so that the character's sort of looking up. So this will be my curve uh, looking up. And then we'll have the center of the face. So this would be the line that I would use to indicate where the nose should go. Uh, and then the eyes are going to come up here. And again, I use like really simple eyes as my default and then I can go in and do more um, like complicated eyes if I want but generally my style I use like sort of these um, you know very simple black uh, black eyes and then uh, we got the nose I want to you know have that nose sort of like pointing up and then I'm gonna think about this in a couple ways now because the I'm having the the head look up the uh, bottom of this cone is going to be here. So then that means that I've got some like perspective things happening here. So if I draw a curve here, um, that, that, that works okay, but I might think that it's not quite uh, as steep. So it might be a little bit of a shallower curve, just depending on how you want to do that. Um, now, let's say uh, we want to have this character um, maybe looking different directions because you can see this one is a lot more dynamic in that it's looking a different direction than how the body's turned. I can do that on this one as well since um, maybe here she's like kind of uh, vertical, uh, vertically oriented. I can you know maybe set that a little bit off kilter and more di make it more dynamic by uh, turning the angles at which the body is, is sort of uh, turned. Uh, or from the head. So then I'll have this, this would be like the center of the, the chest, sort of depending on how I want to do that. Um, and then this could be either, you know, the top of the torso, I could do like a little waist underneath here and then legs off of that. Uh, or I could just, where I have this line, that's starting to feel to me like this might be the torso uh, up at the top. And then this is sort of like the waist and like some sort of like skirt or, uh, dress or kilt at the bottom. So then um, we've got to put the arms and um, it might be tempting to just, you know, sort of put the arms off to uh, the side like this, um, which, you know, could work. Like if there's a particular dance pose that would demand that the uh, the dancer's po uh, sort of arms be out like that, that, that could be fine. But generally, um, you know, try to think about how um, we could move the arms to make it more sort of dynamic. So I could put this arm up and this arm down. Now you'll notice I'm not doing, uh, for these arms, this sort of like circle, circle, circle. I'm just doing kind of like a noodle arm uh, for her here. Uh, and then for the, the bottom, let's see, I'm gonna kind of come down here and then have the legs come out 
uh, like this, and then sort of do I'll have the 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 legs coming back this way. And you know this kind of sets the body off, so that it's a bit more dynamic uh, as well. And you don't always have to do the more dynamic poses. I just find that they help me give my characters a little bit more life right as I'm creating them. But as you're starting off, you know you might want to keep things simple. Uh, just drop off the legs, and then you can think off, think of the the costuming um, that could happen. Um, you know, based off of, of this pose. And then once you have a more sort of solid idea of what you want to draw for the character, then you can actually uh, make the more dynamic pose later. And I, I think that's a good way to work as well. So for uh, this one, I'm going to sort of get in here and let's see what we can do in terms of the what she's wearing. in here So she's kind of dancing, um, and I'm starting to see like a lot of these curves um, would be really good for like the motion lines. So if I really want it to seem as though she's you know really wiggling uh, in these dance moves, then I might go in and do some motion lines around her. And then those curves of the motion lines are going to mimic what we see in the curve of uh, of the dress. So for this one, let's see. So I'm going to get her fingers there. And she's really moving and grooving now. Um, so then we can go back and uh, you can go back and sort of clear out some of these lines so that you can actually see character more clearly and then after this point you would want to go back and probably ink you know to sort of ink up the character um, as you're going okay and so we're gonna do one more uh, so then or at least for the video and then I'll kind of walk you through my thought process as we're doing that um, so I'm gonna go ahead and let's see so this is our cone and since this is a cone and a dome I can go ahead and create a sort of line like this um, if I want to have that be the eye line, I could, but I think I would r rather sort of drop it down this way. And then, let's see, we'll do, maybe I'll do some different eyes here so we can see how the different eyes might uh, impact the character. So do some like long eyelashes. And then I do like a little snout here. And then as I'm kind of thinking about her, I, I, I like the idea of her maybe being an anteater. I don't remember how ant eater ears look. I think it's something maybe like this. So this would be a good opportunity for me to take a look at a reference image, drop that in, that sort of inform uh, my decisions in the process. So, you know, you could hop on or pull out like an old um, National Geographic, take a look at the, uh, the animals that they've got there. That could be a good point for uh, inspiration for sure. Right, 
and then let's see. So then I have uh, this will be the the sort of top of the body, um, and then I'm gonna round off the corners for the pyramid there, so you guys can see that as well as I'll just go ahead and round off the body, so you can see how uh, you know pretty quickly. You can just take some rounded edges and it lets you know where things should go. Like this is the side of the body, so the arms here should uh, sort of be uh, there. And then this side, sort of draw this over on that side just so we can see it. Uh, and then I wanna make, give her a little bit of a rounder rump out on the back side there. Um, I think anteaters have like that sort of thicker tail, right? So do like one of those that we've got there. And then I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this line because it's kind of distracting. Uh, and then come out and then draw uh, where the feet would be. So this is like a, like a sitting pose. Or I'm turning it into a sitting pose here. Again, I don't really know how anteater feet look, but uh, if I'm going to want to make an anteater uh, character in my comic, it might be a good idea to do it, to take a look and see. All right, and then... And then I'm gonna give uh, her like maybe a striped box. Okay, so that's kind of looks like maybe popcorn. And then of course, since she's an anteater, they need to be ants instead of popcorn. So we'll do some little ants in there. We can do like a little speech bubble from all of the ants, or at least a lot of them. They're saying like, oh no! There we go. So then we've got our ant eater here, and there we go. So we've got another character. You know, again, just like really looking at the shapes, playing around with them. The first thing I do is like put a line where I think the eyes could go, uh, sort of curving or moving around so that it looks as though it's either pointing up or down. And then adding uh, where the nose line should be. And then sort of thinking through the body and how the body fits on with the head. Uh, stacking these random shapes can be an excellent way to come up with some random new characters that you haven't thought before. And so what I want you to do after this video is to make sure you print off one of the stacking shapes PDFs from Dragon and Goat website or from uh, our YouTube page here. And then I want you to um, create your eight stacks of the uh, of shapes. Don't think about what it's gonna become, just sort of draw the 3D shapes. And then afterwards, uh, go back and start inventing some characters. Now, like I said, you know, find some comics, find some cartoons that inspire you, and you can steal different parts. So like eyes from one car character, noses from another character. And in this way, you can sort of mix and remix your own characters uh, until you start getting your own feel for your own style, like how you like to draw eyes, how you like to draw noses. Uh, but then also, as you're coming up with different ideas for characters, You'll notice that the personalities of the characters will also drive a lot of their appearances. So you can make alterations to the shapes based on um, how the character is sort of inter perceived by other characters or how they sort of like feel about themselves in the world around them. So be sure you draw relentlessly over and over and over again and turn off that TV, turn off the videos on YouTube, uh, at least after you've watched these and get out your sketchbook and start to draw.
Thanks for stopping by. And follow us at 